How'd that feel tonight? You know, it was awesome. You know, first NFL game, it felt pretty good to you know, play the way I did. Perkins back to throw. He launches. It is reeled in, breaking free, touchdown, Lance McCutcheon. Coming from Montana State, an undrafted free agent guy. Lance McCutcheon at six foot three goes up to get it, fighting through contact. You don't really know who you are, you don't really know your name. It is a jump ball. Guess who? Lance McCutcheon. What is going on right now? I mean, he is unstoppable out here. I'm happy with how I've started this. Me personally, I'm never satisfied where I'm at. I'm always looking to get better and always finding ways I can you know, better myself. You see the boy Don't undrafted. Sleep. Don't sleep. He's going to be a Don't star. Sleep. A star. You know, just being in this position, being in this opportunity, you know, obviously I don't want to get cut. I don't want to leave this place. I want to, you know, be on this team. work and, you know, take advantage when I'm given the opportunity and go out there and just take a couple deep breaths, you know, look around, soak it all in, and then you still got to play. You know, I'm out there to play football. Power and explosion. Uh. It's a great day for some football. This is my kitchen right here. I was able to go out to a couple of stores. As you can see, I don't have a table right now. That's coming. It's a work in progress, a new, new um, apartment, you know, it's all coming. So, you know, we still got a little snacks. Got to have the snacks, got to. I couldn't be even more happier with what the end result's gonna look like. Living room, as you can see right here, we got the $15,000 couch right here. You know, no, every, nobody got this couch right here. Let me show you what it really is. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Though. This is, you know, it's my makeshift couch. Is what I would say. My TV comes next Friday as well. So, in a week or so, I'm gonna have everything set up. This is gonna be a nice, cozy area, and we got another air mattress. So, um, we walk into this room. Like I said, my mom and my sister are always here visiting me. This is probably my pride and joy of my room, though. The big old TV, 55 inch, not the 4K, but the 8K. So, you know, the quality, the high defin, high definition of it is. It's up to par. More into the room. This is my first time being able to have a walk-in closet. So this is, every time I walk in here, I'm gonna smile because you know, I'm able to fit a lot of stuff in there finally. College, we weren't really able to do because we had to wear suits and all that stuff to games. So I want to come crazy with game day fits like every week. You know, I want something that like, ooh, okay. He, he puts in time and effort to that. Cause that's, I do, I enjoy fashion, enjoy clothes and looking good in clothes. How long have I been dreaming about this for, huh? Probably since about four, four years old, actually. Yeah. I think I have you in a Rams uniform when you were about four. Probably. <laughs> Helmet Whenever the Super Bowl yep. in 2000, Same yeah. Same I remember that, still got the picture. Rams. You see, I hung up my favorite Ram. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> in your closet. Not too bad. First day I got here. Jealousy over Lance having the two touchdowns and all that stuff. I don't got no jealousy. I know you came in here upset the other day. That's my dog. He's Montana State's favorite son now. That's okay. Hey, it's, it's a long season. Two, three, four, five. One of the things that my parents always tried to force into me when I was a kid was just, if you put your mind to something, you can achieve anything. I always try and keep that you know, in the back of my mind when I'm trying to go after something. All of my coaches, you can ask them, you know, I'm always trying to push the limit. You know, let me get more reps, let me put more weight on the bar. Lightweight? Ah. Honestly, you just gotta put your foot on the gas and you know trust yourself. And, you know, in, in the game of football, trust your body and 
you got to find your limit and you got to keep pushing until you do. Easy. Come on now. Yeah, can I get a lift? Can I get a lift? Can I get a spot, coach? My dad, he was diagnosed with cancer when I was a sophomore in high school and started in his kidneys and spread to his back, his lungs, um, and a bunch of other places. And I watched that man who could barely sleep at night because he was in so much pain get up every day and go to work. If he can do that, I can handle anything because I'm young, I'm healthy, um, you know, I've got an amazing support around me, an amazing support system. Whenever things get hard and whenever, you know, I'm down, that's something that I always look back to, always. Everything that I went through in my life prepared me to be here and to be in this league, to be able to play in the NFL. Honestly, I'm just excited for the opportunity to, to show it and prove myself. It's a great day for some football. We play fast, we play strong. Let's get out of here with stuff. Let's start the season off right 2 0. Let's go. Rams on three, one, two, three. Rams. Blocked by two guys, you retrace to get back to the quarterback. This guy has made plays throughout training camp. He is not going to wave to you. No, he didn't. <laughs> he is not paying attention. He's hit. He fumbles at the 10. A pile inside the five. Let's go! Let's go! These young players are starting to make plays over and over and over again. You're seeing the talent of this Rams roster. Kobe Durant force a fumble. Let's go! Hey! Let's go! The guys that are playing fast, I know the guys on the sideline are excited as well. Yes, Lynch! Yes, Lynch! Down the sideline, caught by McCutcheon. Spins away from one at the 35. Last week's star, Lance McCutcheon with 22 on the catch and run. Oh, that's Lance. That's Lance. Lance. Lance McCutcheon continues to shine at SoFi Stadium. Did you see his last game? Lance said, I'm making this team. Though. Yeah, he is. 12 seconds remaining. The Rams are down four. Shotgun snap, back to Perkins, retreats to midfield, pressure in his face, he hoists one right sideline, jump ball, caught by McCutcheon, he goes down at the 11, 4 seconds, 3 seconds, the officials are ruling down by contact, the clock has expired, the Rams never got a chance to get a ball spotted in what turned into an all or nothing play, and a 24-20 to win for the Houston Texans over the Los Angeles Rams, who will go to Cincinnati next week in a rematch of the Super Bowl for some joint practices against the Bengals. Game two is a wrap. Not how it wanted to turn out, but you know. 
making the roster with two good performances and some practices coming up in another game, does it seem realistic to you, like you've got a shot to make that 50 Yeah, I mean, it's realistic, but, you know, it can't be satisfied. You know, at the end of the day, I'm still a undrafted free agent, and so I uh, just still got to compete week in and week out, game in and game out, and just, you know, keep working. <laughs> What's going on? How you doing? Kobe Durant. I'm doing good. Kobe Durant. Yes, sir. I went to school at Jackson State. Coming from a small school in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, it was a good days back there during that time. And the scouts stayed on Jackson State campus. Every time I look up, we had scouts on that campus. We had four or five scouts every day almost on campus. Then on down the line, they stopped going to HBCU schools. They stopped going to the they stopped Power going. Five. We had too many guys that could have had the opportunity to go to that next level. All they wanted is an opportunity and a chance, and they just didn't get that chance. And now I'm looking at it, they're kind of coming back to the HBCU schools and kind of giving those guys a little bit of chance. Now, I just had some great coaches back there during that time, and they stayed on my back and told me what I could do and what I couldn't do. And I knew what I could do. Uh, the, the good thing about it is that I would never let nobody tell me that I was too small, that I couldn't play in the NFL, I couldn't go nowhere, I couldn't go to the other school. But back during that time, I represented myself when I went on that field. I said, hey, I'm from an HBCU school, Jackson State, and I represent it. And that's what you're standing on. And that's what I'm going yes, on. Yes, sir. And that's how, that's how I was, too. I just came in with a chip on my shoulder um, ever since coming from, like, high school. I had zero offers coming out of high school, just like you. I actually walked on to South Carolina State. I had to sit out the whole 2017 season and rolled over 2018 season. And I sat in Coach Pew's office, and I told him, he wouldn't regret giving me this opportunity for me to um, be able to step on the field with them. So, and before you know it, after 2018 spring spring ball, I was on scholarship. The hard work and dedication paid off. See, that's that's the key because, like I said, you you did exactly what I did because when I came out of school, I was determined to not to let nobody turn me around. Right. And uh, like I said, I, when I go out and talk to the young kids today, and I tell them, never let nobody tell you what you can't do. If all you got to do is look in that mirror and point that finger, point that finger, and that's who's going to say what you can't do. So you go out there and you bust your butt and do what you have to do to get it done because if that's what you want, if you, if you don't want it, I can understand. But if you got it in your heart, your you mind, your mentality. soul, you've got, hey, you can go get it done. Yes, sir. This is right here, the HBCU Hall of Fame. This is the year I went in here. I went in the HBCU Hall of Fame, okay. and you got all these guys, and, and one of the guys that really... This guy right here, Deacon Jones. Deacon Jones. Deacon Jones, the one that really made the game. Yes, sir. James Shaq Harris and Doug Williams, they, they started it. Yes, sir. And they got uh, all these guys that you can see here that went through the Hall of Fame, went from, from college to the pros. But you look at these guys here like... Donnie Shell. Donnie, Donnie Shell. South, South Carolina State. South Carolina State. Yes, sir. You got, you got about four or five guys in there from South Carolina State, so that goes to show you, if those guys can do what they, if this here, you can do the same thing. do the same thing. But like yes, I sir. keep saying, don't let nobody tell you that you can't do it. Yes, don't let nobody tell you too small, because if you look and see where I came from, you can't be no smaller than I was, 155 pounds coming out of high school and college. Yes, sir. And so, you up to my goal is be successful and be as good as you want to be. Yes, sir. Well, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the culminating event of Rise with the Rams. Thank you to the NFL for allowing us to host this here. Uh, Rise with the Rams, what it is, is a leadership and community building program where we invite diverse high school football teams with a cross-section of race and socioeconomic backgrounds to really equip them uh, to break down barriers and unite communities across LA. So we're excited for this program. I'm excited for today. We have some very special guests here that will be a part of a panel to have a critical conversation. First, Graham Safety, Russ Yeast. Followed by Rams wide receiver, Lance McCutcheon. CEO of RISE, Diane Billings Burford. Thank you, Jonathan, for those introductions. I'm thrilled to be here. Welcome and bienvenidos to all our youth participants. 
And I'm actually going to put a couple people on the spot to start off. So um, Jacques, Russ, and Lance. As players, former players, current players, how has football helped you or empowered you to make change in your communities? You want to start it? You go ahead. I said, uh, you know, football is the, you know, the greatest team sport there is. You know, sports is one of the, you know, the biggest platforms we have. And, you know, today, a lot of young people, you know, look up to us and, you know, want to be one of us one day, I guess. And, uh, you know, to inspire change, you're never going to be able to do this on your own. Everyone has a different background. And uh, it's just kind of a way to, like, bond and kind of share your stories and understand where everyone else is coming from. Just to be able to, you know, be here on this platform, be able to accept this role, you know, be a, be a voice for people who don't have one. You know, that, uh, you know, that kind of means a lot to me. I'm sure it does to a lot of rest of the guys on the team. You know, that's a you know, special opportunity for us. So I just say, you know, keep being a leader and just, uh, you know, continue to, to be a voice for people who don't have one. My name is Jess Williams. I'm from Oak Street in High School. Uh, to, the, to the two Rams players, who are your, like, biggest role models, I guess, you guys are growing up? I would say, you know, uh, I grew up a single parent household. I'm gonna say my mom. She just kind of shows me and proves to me every day that, you know, you work hard, it's gonna, it's gonna pay off for you. And so just, just try to, you know, my mom is a big inspiration for me and you know, this is kind of why, it's kind of why I'm here. It's kind of why I got here, it's because of her. You know, as long as I can remember, she can work the two jobs. You know, she has a crazy five days a week schedule, midnight to 5 p.m. kind of days. And so just to grow up and just seeing that, that gives me a lot of motivation just to obviously get her to stop working. And so she knows she's not waking up at, you know, 11 o'clock at night to go work all day. I'm happy with how I started this. Obviously, I don't want to, I don't want to leave this place. I want to, you know, be on this team. Me personally, I'm never satisfied with where I'm at. I'm always looking to get better. I was finding ways I can go better myself and, you know, eventually better, better the team. Just keep taking advantage of my opportunities when they come. Yeah, let's practice one, over. We got, we got another practice tomorrow. And then we got the game. What's good, man? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, man. Can't complain at all. How you doing? I'm good, I'm good. I hear it's a special day for you. Yes, sir. Not only my birthday, but you Happy know. Happy birthday. Yes, sir. Happy birthday, my dude. I appreciate you. Just been blessed out here. You know, I've been, we got this joint practice with the Bengals, and um, I've been blessed enough to, you know, be taking all the ones reps and getting all that, you know, those um, good a game kind of like experiences that I need. You take a war rep? Yeah. So right now I am. I just got up. I just got back. I just started practicing like two weeks ago because you know I had surgery and all that stuff. So it's been a great opportunity for me to get in there and get those reps. So I've been taking them and all that. The more you can get with the ones, man, you get a more realistic look about timing, how the place to actually work and function, and then you know that gives you a better idea about your own talents against some of the best in the in the country. I, I'm familiar with the game for mm -hmm. a very long time since your days in high school to even Notre Dame. So I mean, you're a dual threat. You know, you you have the capabilities of playing in the league. It's all about the commitment. Right. It's about what you're willing to do that's the next guy that you're competing against not willing to do. 100%. When the opportunity comes, you shine. What advice could I help you with so far right now in your journey? Yeah, just like rookie year, like what, what things do you wish that you would have known like your rookie year going into it and playing, getting those live action reps? Like what, what are some things that, you know, you focused on during practice or even like during like watching film? First thing is recovery. It's important as soon as you get off the practice field that you're already thinking about recovery. If it's just cold tub, ice, or just getting off your legs, yeah. you know, I think that's really important. As young guys, you don't realize how important it is. I will also say uh, mentally, learning the offensive line. Yeah. You know, um, I always share with young guys is understanding each of them individually. They're going to have strengths of their own, and then collectively, it's going to be different. So you'll know one offensive lineman may give more ground than the other when he's pass pro. Mm -hmm. And then also in the run game, one may pull better yeah. than the other, right? And that lets you know your timing 
you know, which one you could run more aggressive with, which one you can have more patience with, the kind of thing. Yeah. Just pay attention to that. Pay attention yeah. to the old lineman in front of you and build that chemistry with For them. sure. That's crazy because that's the first time I've ever heard, like, a coach or anybody say that, like, to individually learn your um, old lineman or, like, tight ends as well because, like, I can – I've had experiences where, you know, I've been pulling tight end, one tight end slower than the other, and which messes up my tempo. So, like, actually hearing that and realizing that, like, okay, now I got to really lock in and learn, you know, how to, how to really get inside um, the inside hip or, you know, having patience and tempo. How's your preseason been so far, the first two games? It's been smooth. So, I've been, so I'm not from the play in the preseason. Um, you know, I had, I had surgery on my foot during OTAs. I had broke it, and, you know, I'm really getting it back. So, like I said, it's like my second week practicing. So, um, my, pre, my preseason is going with the ones and getting all those reps and doing all those things. So that's been going smooth, right? Like, if I feel real good. Like, I'm seeing the holes. I'm making, like, I'm not overcutting. I'm not over, I'm not overdoing anything. I'm just being me and playing the ball, playing ball like I've always done. So it's been fun. Right, well, that's good, man. Well, I'm wishing you a speedy recovery. Yes, sir. And, uh, more blessings to you. I can't wait to see you in person. Yeah, I know. You know, I'm saying, dap you up, give you love in person, but more, more importantly, see you perform and do what you love, man. For so, sure. At the end of the day, that's all that matters. Absolutely. I appreciate you for, you know, talking to me and letting me know all the game and getting me hip, so that's real. Absolutely. Yep. Enjoy this ride, please, dude, for both of us. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> all right. All right, now have a good day. Love. All right, bye. On an 85 degree Saturday night in Cincinnati, welcome back to what was Paul Brown Stadium, is now paid for stadium in Cincinnati, Ohio. So after a week that included a couple of joint practices, the Rams and the Bengals wrapping up the NFL preseason tonight where they turn their attention to roster trim downs. McCutcheon leading the NFL preseason in receiving yards, also hoping to make the roster come next week. So we gotta have a day on teams. We have a day on teams, A2. Just do your job, play fast, play physical. We'll be fine. First one down. First one down. Montana State, Coach BJ, give me a Snickers for that. Let's go. Let's go. Get us going. Get us going. We gonna follow you. We just need one play. One play to get the whole team going. Let's go. Let's get these guys going. Let's get the team going. We make one play. Come on, defense. Looking left. He hitches. He retreats some more. He's dragged down for a huge sack. Kier Thomas. Yes, sir, Kier. Good job. Good hit, Kier. Barreling in from the left side, Kier Thomas. You think he wants a job on this team? My goodness. He's trying to make the team making plays like that. Come on, D, hold him here. One last play. Don't give him three. Sure as hell, don't give him six. There are six seconds left, and time for one more shot of the end zone. It's no secret. You guys pointed it out. They are coming after Durant in the passing game based on what they saw in practice. Short drop, quick throw, right side, end zone. Christine incomplete. Kobe Durant in coverage held his ground. Here we go, D. There we go, D. There we go, D. Well, they tell you the National Football League, opportunities are given, not earned. And when it's given to you, you take, the, you take advantage of it. Yeah, great job by the defense rallying. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Good D, good D, good D. Let's go. Fly down there, play fast. Hit someone if we get the opportunity. We just gotta keep being good on special teams. We wanna make this team. Coach BJ, that's another Snickers. Your boy's out here on the, on the big stage. Trying to get better. <laughs> trying to make this team, Mom. Um, trying to get fade down here. Throw it up, give me a chance. Let's go, find that end zone. I'm gonna meet you down there. Let's go, y'all. Let's find the end zone. Let's finish this and get sick. Finish this and get six. Good protection. Big ball down the left sideline, adjusting to it to make the catch. Lance McCutcheon continues to shine in this preseason. Finish this and get six. Finish this and get six. Looking left as Perkins gets off that read. After dodging edge rush, now back to his left. Extends the football. He got it. Good job. Good job. Got wide in too far again. It's a hard one. Those ones are impressed. You got a double move coming too. Yeah. Just great for hands. You do get wide in like that. I just said the stutter and I just went. Yeah. And you start to feel him start to come into you like that. He's pushing you into that side. Having that swipe ready where he's, he's going to start feeling that momentum coming that he's got you running to the sideline. He's going to put his hands on you. If you can just be ready to swipe down or swipe up. And get off that thing, he'll push you right into your route. Oh, yeah. It was, it was great. great job. Thanks, cool. Good game, bro. Great job, baby. Good luck this year. Good game, Stay brother. healthy this Appreciate you, man. Good luck this year. We're all anxious to the regular season. We want games that count, uh, but we don't want to make light of these final moments for some individuals who have given really their whole lives to earn this opportunity, which inevitably, in some cases, will be their last in professional football. Thanks, Coach. Now it's time to get to work. Yeah, We're going to cut down the roster. We'll trim the roster, figure out where we need to go. Guys got a lot of reps in. We got a lot of time to evaluate, a lot of tape to evaluate. And then from there, let's, let's get the best 53 out there and let's go. Yeah, we just needed, I needed to be better earlier. That's okay. It's okay. Asking for gloves, man. These aren't free. Yeah, like, I need these. What needs to get done between now and Thursday night, September the 8th, before we uh, do turn our attention to the Buffalo Bills in earnest? I don't want to be the guy that makes the cuts. I really don't, because I, I think all these guys have worked hard. Hmm. I, I, really, I, I think they've, for the most part, they've all gotten better. And you can find a role for every single guy on this football team. The problem is, the way it is, you have to cut all the way down. The more I look at some of the names, Lance McCutcheon, guys that have showed up in preseason. But those young DBs, and I always have to go back to what I what we saw the last couple of days. Darian Kendrick, Kobe Durant, yeah. some of the ones we're those talking about. Those guys were playing lights out. They're battle tested. Around the room and around this organization, and I think you might know this, this is almost a zero excuse football team. There is no excuse for you not to get better every single day. Everything is geared towards you being a better athlete, better coach, better everything. So that's why it's been so competitive, but you do have to, to, to cut down. That's just the way it is. Everything that I went through in my life prepared me to be here. To be in this league, to be able to play in the NFL, I'm just excited for the opportunity to prove myself. Anyone can play on any given Sunday. When my time is called, I don't let down my teammates. I just came in with a chip on my shoulder. He wouldn't regret giving me this opportunity. Come September 8th, it's just going to compete with some of the best players in the world, the best team in the world. I've been working my whole life for this. 